Oh my gosh, guys. It's the triple-headed amethyst ender dragon. That is so rare. These are the funniest fake Minecraft speedruns of all time. This first speedrun begins and there's already something off. No, it's not his spawn as he's facing completely straight. And it's not even his hotbar as he has zero items in his inventory and he's in survival mode. But look into the left corner of the screen. You can spot a bonus chest. The problem is, we clearly saw the speedrunner had this option disabled when he generated his world. This means that the footage of him loading into the game and his spawn are actually two different clips edited together. This will make more sense very soon. So, the runner starts off by breaking some wood, crafting tools, and locating some buried treasure, where he collects some golden iron, fairly normal loot, but he then finds a suspiciously convenient ruins portal directly next to his spawn. And while the loot in the chest seems to be fairly normal, this seed seems slightly familiar. Well, after a bit of research on the official speed speedrun.com website, look at the second fastest speedrun ever attempted by the runner nofear1337. And if we take a look at the spawn, notice how it's exactly the same as this speedrun. The buried treasure is also in the exact same location, and the loot is completely identical. Meaning, the speedrunner took the seed from this world record run and used it to gain an advantage. Hence why he had to edit together his world generation to make it seem real. So, the runner finishes the portal and spawns into the nether, directly next to a bastion. And while that may seem very suspicious, that isn't what's fake about this part of the speedrun. Because take a closer look at the zombie pigman to the right of him. If you put the footage in slow motion, you can see that there was a slight cut in the recording, as this zombie pigman jumped completely forward in time. But why was there a cut? Well, notice how the speedrunner has suddenly acquired an iron pickaxe in his inventory. When just seconds earlier, we can clearly see that this same inventory slot was not an iron pickaxe. He clearly cut the video to get an iron pickaxe in creative mode, as he knew you couldn't mine gold blocks in the bastion without an iron pickaxe. And what's even funnier is he literally had enough iron to craft the pickaxe normally, but still decided to cheat. So, using this pickaxe, he enters the bastion and successfully collects 27 gold ingots. But this is where things start to get Get interesting because it appears as though the piglins are making trades without any gold being in their hands and what's even weirder is that we can clearly see the runner still has 27 ingots in his hotbar meaning he hasn't even dropped any for the piglins to trade with so how are they making trades without any gold in their hands honestly i have no idea and i don't even want to question it so the runner gets lucky with his trades and collects 16 ender pearls out of thin air now a normal speedrunner would then make his way to a fortress to collect blaze rods, a crucial item in crafting Eyes of Ender. But this speedrunner decides to ignore fortress and instead build a portal, heading straight back to the overworld. This seems very weird, but it will make sense in a few seconds. So, the runner spawns back into the overworld, but randomly decides to craft a bow and sail in a random direction, until he finds a fortress? In the overworld? How is that even possible? Well, now it's clear why he didn't bother looking for one in the nether. So, he enters the fortress, finds the blaze spawner, and collects seven rods fairly easily. He then crafts Eyes of Ender and starts throwing them in hopes of locating the strongholds. And to nobody's surprise, the eyes point to the strongholds being directly under the fortress. So, the runner digs down, enters the stronghold, and starts to search for the end portal room, which he seems to find extremely quickly. Very bizarre considering he didn't use any techniques for locating the room like a real speedrunner would. Well, I'll rewind the footage to when the speedrunner first entered the strongholds. Notice how the block on top of some of the doors is slightly thinner than blocks on other doors. This thinner block is known as a stone brick wall, not a regular stone brick. And if you replay the footage, notice how the speedrunner only enters doors with this thinner block on top. These were clearly placed off camera.
hammer by the speedrunner as a way to direct him in the path of the end portal room. So, the runner places his eyes of Ender and teleports into the end. Now, instead of immediately going for the dragon, or even trying to break the crystals, the speedrunner claims to have a brand new strategy to kill the dragon. And I'll let him explain. Okay guys, there's a brand new feature they just added called the Secret Dragon Vault, and we're gonna go loot it right now. Okay, well last time I checked, this isn't a real feature. Why is he actually breaking the obsidian? Oh my gosh, it's actually real. So the runner enters one of the most overpowered secret vaults I've seen in Minecraft. Full netherite armor, a chest filled with god apples, and the strongest bow in all of Minecraft. And with this loot, the Ender Dragon doesn't last much longer. This next speedrun begins, but there's already something fake. Because look to the left of where the speedrunner spawned in, where you can see a sign displaying the singular number, 3. Clearly placed by the speedrunner, keep this in mind for later, as it's not the first number we'll see throughout the run. So, the runner enters the village, where he starts collecting hay and breaking some beds. But when the runner goes to kill the Iron Golem, notice how it isn't actually a time. Him back. And if you look closely into the distance, you can actually spot a second iron golem in the exact same village. He likely spawned in his own iron golem in creative mode to make it easier to kill as iron golems built by players can't fight back. So the runner then goes to loot this village chest. And while the items inside seem fairly normal on the surface, if you take a closer look, the loaves of bread actually make the shape of the number 7. That's the second number we've seen in the speedrun, and don't forget it as there's more coming up. So the runner crafts himself a bucket, gathers some wood, and begins to search for the ruins portal. Now, pause the footage at this moment, where we can clearly see that the ruins portal contains 8 pieces of obsidian. Now the runner turns to the side and kills the rabbit for some food, but when he turns back to face the portal, there's magically been a piece of obsidian added, as there's now 9 blocks instead of 8. And of course, the chest contains one obsidian, the perfect amount to finish the portal. But how did a piece of obsidian get added to the portal? Well, let's go back to just a few seconds earlier, when the speedrunner killed the rabbit. If you put the footage in slow motion, you can actually see that there was a cut in the video, as the player magically teleported slightly to the left, which allowed the speedrunner to go off camera, place the extra piece of obsidian, and pretend like it never happened. So the runner enters the nether, and giving them the benefit of the doubt, the spawn seems completely legit. There's only one issue. When he's making his way to a nearby fortress, take a very close look at this wall, where the number 8 can actually be seen in the wall. Remember this number along with the 3 and 7 we've seen earlier in the run. Now, the runner enters the fortress, finds the blaze spawner, and gets 7 rods pretty normally. He then makes his way to a nearby bastion, where he finds an abnormal amount of piglets, way more than than can naturally spawn. And when the speedrunner accidentally hits a piglin, they don't become hostile and don't attack him back. Something that's impossible, as piglins will always become hostile after you hit him. Meaning the runner changes game mode to peaceful off camera. So the runner gathers his eyes of ender and leaves the nether. Now when the runner spawns into the overworld, take a very close look at this tree, where for the fourth time we can see a number mysteriously in the speedrun. This time the number 3. All these numbers will make sense very soon. So the runner throws his eyes of Ender and locates the strongholds. And when he enters into the end, here's where things get weird. When he spawns in, he's greeted with a very strange looking chest. And when the runner tries to open it, he's given the option to enter a password? Well, throughout the run, we've seen the speedrunner come across 4 distinct numbers. First, we saw the number 3 on a random sign. Then, loaves of bread made the shape of a 7. He then saw the number 8 in the wall in the nether, and he saw his final number as leaves in a tree. So of course, there's only 4 possible numbers that could be the password to this chest. And when the password's successful, the runner finds an interesting item, known as the Hammer of the Storm? Which gives the runner the ability to summon lightning at any moment he wants. Yeah, that item's way too overpowered. 
This next runner spawns in directly near a shipwreck where he's in survival mode, selected the first lot of his inventory, and he's facing completely straight. Seems legit. But as the runner goes to loot the shipwreck chests, we can clearly see another player trying to hide behind these wooden planks. The problem is, this is a solo speedrun, and having another player on the same world is clearly not allowed. So when the runner finds a god apple in the shipwreck chest, it's pretty obvious his friend is the culprit. The runner then returns to shore and locates a nearby village and head straight to one specific village house, where the chest inside contains some fairly normal loot. Bread, apples, a super battle axe, wait what? But hold on a second, how did the speedrunner know that this super overpowered item was in this village house? Well, let's go back to when the speedrunner first entered the village. If you look very closely above the house that contains the super battle axe, you can actually see the outline of a player wearing a skin he thinks blends in with the sky. Most likely, this is the same friend who accidentally revealed himself earlier in the run, and he purposely flew above this village house house to alert the player the super battle axe was inside. So the runner finds a nearby lava pool and enters into the nether. The speedrunner then decides to use a popular speedrun technique for locating a fortress, where they increase their FOV and use the number of entities to guide which direction a fortress may be located. But when comparing their method to a real speedrunner, it's obvious that this runner is simply using this as a distraction, because at the exact same time, we can actually spot the first we've seen throughout the run flying in a very specific direction. And 20 seconds later, if we listen to the speedrun's audio, we can actually hear a Discord notification. And all of a sudden, the speedrunner knows the exact direction the fortress is located. It's pretty obvious his friend used a locate command to find the fortress, DM'd him the coordinates on Discord, which the speedrunner used to find the fortress. So he enters the fortress, finds the blaze spawner, but only collects four rods. And later, when he goes to locate a bastion, he decides to only collect six ender pearls. A normal Minecraft speedrunner would often collect far more of each item, to have enough eyes to finish the portal. But his small amount of items will make sense very soon. So the runner needs to make a portal to head back to the overworld. The problem is, he didn't get enough obsidian to be able to build another portal. Until when he's walking, a stack of obsidian matches magically falls from the sky, and if you look closely, you can see particles in the air, meaning the obsidian was being dropped by his friend using an invisibility potion. So using the obsidian, the runner is able to make their way to the overworld, and they seem to locate the stronghold very quickly, but giving them the benefit of the doubt, their process seemed fairly normal. Now, do you remember earlier in the run when the speedrunner did not collect a normal amount of rods and pearls? Well, he enters the stronghold and he only has six eyes of ender, far too little to complete the portal. Well, when he enters the end portal room, he finds a chest called the item duplicator? Is this a new update that I missed? Okay, he's gotta be joking. Why is he actually putting his eyes of ender? It's not gonna work. Okay, how is that possible? Well, I guess now it's clear why he didn't need to collect a ton of rods or pearls in the nether. So with enough eyes of ender, the runner makes their way into the end. And when they spawn in the end, and the friend isn't even hiding that they're part of the speedrun, and they kill the ender dragon together. This next speedrunner spawns in directly next to a ruined portal. Suspicious, but considering his spawn seems fairly normal, we can say it's legit. However, the loot inside this ruined portal chest is a different story, because scattered among the obsidian and gold is an item that isn't possible to spawn in this chest, this piece of blackstone. And while it may appear incredibly innocent, this one block will be the extremely important part of the speedrun very soon. Now, even though the runner spawned directly next to a portal, without enough obsidian, he's forced to look for a nearby village. And while the village looks completely normal on the surface, there's one small detail which reveals there's something incredibly suspicious going on. Because look very closely at this village light post. A normal village light post contains four torches, one on each side of the block. But in this speedrun, one of the 
the torches has been mysteriously missing. And once the speedrunner notices this, they decide to dig straight down under it, leading them to a fully completed nether portal. It's pretty obvious they broke one of the torches to remember a ruined portal was under this specific lamppost. So the runner enters the portal and heads into the nether. And without scanning or doing any speedrun technique, they somehow manage to locate the bastion almost immediately. But rewind the footage to when they first spawned in. Take a close look at this lava pool. If you look closely, you can actually see that it creates the shape of an arrow. And this arrow points to the exact direction of the bastion. The runner clearly messed with it before recording to point themselves in the correct direction. So after collecting 16 ender pearls, a normal speedrunner would then search for a nearby fortress. But this speedrunner oddly decides to start building a nether portal, even though he hasn't been to a fortress and has zero blaze rods. Well, instead of using flint and steel to light the portal, they decide to use gold? How is that even possible? Well, the speedrunner enters it and they spawn directly into a fortress. Since when did they add a fortress portal into Minecraft? So the runner finds the blaze spawner where they collect 9 rods very quickly. They then build a normal nether portal and head back into the overworld. And using the process of triangulation, they locate the stronghold and enter the end. Well, do you remember when earlier in the run, the speedrunner found this blackstone block in the ruined portal chest? Well, he uses that very block as the final piece to crafting the super infinite matter sword, which deals over 128,000 damage with one swing. And the ender dragon stands no chance against this weapon. Subscribe for more fake Minecraft speedruns.